Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This guy is the Slider Pen by uh, Tactile Turn, uh, which is a company that I, I reviewed before the uh, Mover, I believe, by them, and it's an interesting company. It's run by a machinist who's really clearly passionate about the work. This guy was actually launched on Kickstarter some time back. Maybe you can see the little Kickstarter logo on the inside of the clip there. But um, nonetheless, when I saw this come up, I immediately became a backer uh, because, you know, I'm always interested in checking out new pens, and this one looked interesting. So this was a uh, Kickstarter reward shipped to me. Uh, let's do a quick size comparison here. This is a um, Pilot G2 sort of pen. This is just your generalized big click stick. Uh, here is a Hinderer Investigator tactical pen. This is my very favorite pen ever, the um, Prometheus Alpha pen, and... Um, I've got a week. Oh, uh, here we go. A uh, Paca Jada uh, pen, which I'll be doing some comparison with a little bit later. So uh, there you go. This gives you a sense of the size of it. It's not particularly big. Um, it's a little bit thicker than a lot of pens. But nonetheless, uh, there you go. So let's go on ahead and uh, jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular bolt action sort of pen. Okay, so on the good side, first off, I actually like very much the tactile texture of this pen. Let's see if I can show it off here, but you can see that the entire body of the pen is covered in these sorts of very, very thin ridges, these turning marks here, and it lends the pen a sort of stickiness in the hand, which is spectacular, but doesn't feel dirty. And I really appreciate that very much. This is nicely done in that way. This is unique in a lot of ways as well. That's a texture that I've not felt on other pens, and it's something I like very much. So that's a great thing to just start with here. Next thing about this guy is that um, there is actually two pieces to this pen. Well, three, I suppose. Um, you've got your bottom part, you've got your body, and then you've got your cap up here. Uh, the thing is, well, not cap, but the end portion. Thing is, um, you can't actually see the gap between the cap and the body until you start to untwist it, and there it becomes apparent. Again, watch, disappears. That's kind of neat. That's some good precision, and I appreciate that very much. Next thing, the bolt here on this pen. I'm going to see if I can show this off. Um, this is a bolt-action sort of pen, and so this is the little piece that you manipulate in order to run this. Um, but you can see here that it's actually nicely chamfered. There's a, a ridge up top here. There's an, I mean, it, it's kind of, it's well done, and it gives a nice feeling in the hand as you're manipulating this bolt, which is great. Next thing, the clip I like very much. Um, it's a little bit loose for my taste on this guy. But the thing is, um, the, the texture is good. It's bare on the outside, but it's engraved on the inside. I'll see if I can show that to you here. It may be a little tough with the lighting conditions, but you can see, yeah, it says right there, tactile turn and then the Kickstarter logo on the inside of the clip. That's nice. Um, there's no billboarding. There's no nastiness that way. It's just a clip. Great, great, great. Next thing, um, the uh, shipment on this guy was actually very quick by Kickstarter standards. Very often with Kickstarters, you buy a pen or a, any piece of gear, really, and you'll see it in six months. You'll see it in a year, two years. Maybe you won't see it at all. Kickstarter's always a gamble, but uh, this guy was on my doorstep about two months after the, uh, after the project finished, which was impressive. Um, I appreciated that very, very much. In fact, the guy was very responsive during that process. Uh, he talked about all the delays that did come up and was very genuinely apologetic about things, too, and that he didn't need to be. It's, you know, Kickstarter. You expect a long delay. But he, you could tell he was being very conscientious about that, which was great. And the fact that he did ship so quickly, excellent. The other thing is the customer service that this guy gives is great. Uh, Will Hodges is the guy's name, and I had an issue with my first slider that I got off of the Kickstarter and um, shot him an email, and maybe 20 minutes later I had a response saying, yeah, that's not right, I'm going to shoot you a new one, uh, and then just return the old one to me. Okay, that's how you handle customer service. Got a tracking number 10 minutes later problem solved. So that was really well done. Um, and then finally, uh, this is a weird little thing, but I'm actually a fan of, I'm going to see if I can get it so you can hear this. When you disengage the bolt, there's actually an air pressure gap inside the pen itself. So you kind of hear a bit of a, whoop, watch, kind of a whoop. It may be a little bit too quiet for you to pick up on the phone. But it's neat. It's like, wow, okay, there's some precision here. That uh, To the extent where this is pulling out, it creates a little bit of a vacuum around the pen tip, and then it pops back in. I, 
absolutely means nothing to anybody, but it was neat to me, and so I wanted to point it out, because that is cool. So that's the good here, right? Love the turning marks. There's a nice seamless gap between the body and the end of the pen. It's got a nice chamfered bolt on it. The clip is easy. Um, it's got very quick shipment by Kickstarter standards. It's got good customer service, and that little pop thing brings me some joy. Let's talk about what's great about this pen. So what's great about this pen is the versatility of refills. This takes any Parker style refill, and that's a beautiful thing because you can get Parker refills at any office supply store, even most bookshops. Um, Parker refills are pretty ubiquitous, and this guy just takes any vanilla Parker refill. But there's actually a fair amount of variety available there. This guy comes with a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000 uh, ink cartridge, which is fine. I mean, I've been writing on myself already during the review, but I, it's, it's not a bad refill whatsoever. But you can also switch swap in a space pen refill if that's your jam. You can swap in any variety of different kinds of refills, even the Paca Quink gel refill. I, so I like very much that this is available to take pretty much anything, unlike a lot of pens which are made for one very specific refill. You can also, it's worth saying, upgrade, uh, there's the, this is the slider, there's also the glider which is a little bit longer and takes a different set of refills, um, the, the G2, Mont Blanc, things around there. So that's kind of great. You get two choices of pen that each take a big variety of refills and I appreciate that flexibility very much. Let's talk about the bad here. So on the bad side, uh, first and foremost, I'm not a big fan of how they did the spring on the inside of the pen here. In that, uh, if you pop this guy out, the spring is completely free roaming. Um, this guy can go flying across the room if you disassemble your pen during a meeting. Um, there, there's nothing holding it in there. But actually, worse still, the inside of the pen is actually very much larger than the spring and the refill. Which means that as you put in the refill back into the pen, it's actually very easy to go outside of the spring inside the pen here. Um, no, missed it again. And so very often putting the pen back together requires a couple of different tries. That's not a problem for most people because most people don't take the pen apart except to refill, uh, to change the refill. But if you're a compulsive pen disassembler, that's going to be ugly in a couple of ways for you. That it'll go flying across the room because it's not captive and that it's a little hard to get the refill past it. Um, not a big deal, but it is something to keep in mind. Next issue, I'm not a big fan of pens where there's stuff going on above the clip, because if you've got a pocket that has a little flap that folds over, that can be awkward. I tend to prefer clips that are flush with the very top of the pen. This is a design decision. I'm not going to beat them up too bad, but that is something you got to keep in mind. If you like wearing shirts with a flap over, or you don't like that little protrusion there, this has got that going on. Not a big, big deal. Um, next issue for me is um, the pocket clip on this guy came very loose. Um, it's very easy for this to pop open. And although I'm sure there is a way that I can get this top cap off, I have been unable to without resorting to tools. And that's that's unfortunate because the way that you generally fix a bent clip is that, uh, well, you flip the clip, uh, the clip around and then bend it a little bit. Uh, with this very nice texture on there, I don't want to go with this with a Leatherman because I'm going to run the risk of damaging the pen. But still, um, I don't like the fact that there's not much spring to this clip. I mean, there's plenty of spring, but it's just, it's way too loose on there, and there's not an easy way for me to flip it around and fix that. And then finally, on this pen at least, there are some sharp edges around the uh, the bolt area. It's not the end of the world, and the first one was terrible, but particularly this back rim here is a little bit on the sharp side, and so as you're manipulating this bolt, it's very easy to catch yourself on that little sharp thing. It's not full-on, like, cut you open sharp, but it is a little bit uncomfortable. So, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, that's the bad here. You got your sharp edges around the bolt area. Uh, the pocket clip is a little bit loose on this guy. Um, it protrudes a little bit above the clip. And then, uh, finally, I'm not a big fan of how the spring was done in here. Let's talk about the ugly, because sadly there's some ugly here. So on the ugly side here, um, first off, this is actually the second one of these that I've owned. The first one I got was an absolute lemon. Um, the action was incredibly gritty. You could actually see it kind of digging into the back of this. Uh, and there was actually lock stick, which meant that you needed to use a little bit more force to pop the thing free at first and then manipulate the rest of it. That was really no good whatsoever. Uh, it also had some milling issues around the tip. It rattled like a maraca. Um, and so I emailed Will Lodges, the creator, and said, hey, is this really what you, you're going for? He said, no, that's a quality control issue. Here, I'll send you one that's perfect. And to his credit, he responded within 20 minutes. I had a tracking number. That was no problem. But 
it's still unfortunate that one that was clearly that bad went out the door. That means that nobody actually even bothered to do one of these things on it before packaging it up. Or if they did, they just didn't give a damn. So that's ugly. I don't like the fact that that was sent out in the first place. But he was filling a lot of Kickstarter rewards. I'm willing to cut him a little bit of slack there. Unfortunately, though, the one that he sent that is perfect is at least not, to my taste, perfect. First off, the action on this guy is a little bit unpleasant, because the first maybe 25% of the travel here is basically unsprung. The spring in this guy doesn't feel like it's quite long enough to provide tension throughout the entire thing. And so you go for this first chunk, with very little effort. This just kind of bounces back and forth. It even rattles around a little bit. And then suddenly you hit a point where it's like, oh crap, I need a lot of power now. And then you increase that power, increase that power. And then while well, you're increasing this power, you're navigating this path. And then finally it pops over there. Um, I don't like that particularly. It doesn't feel very compelling and it doesn't feel very, I don't know, it feels very fiddly relative to a lot of the other bolt action pens out there in the world. So I don't like that at all. Um, next issue with this guy is that this guy rattles a fair amount. I mean, listen to this. That's kind of ugly. Let's compare. This is a Prometheus Alpha pen. Nada. Hinder or Investigator. Nada. This is a Parker Jada. This is a $7 pen that you can buy at any grocery store. Nada. This is a Bic Click Stick pen that you get for free at the bank. Not because you stole it, because they were giving it away. Or if you stole it. But still, you get absolutely no shaking. Uh, no rattling. But on this guy, a $70 pen rattles like a freaking maraca. I, I don't love that. <laughs> Honestly, it feels just like it wasn't quite right. It wasn't fit for the refill or something along those lines. That's ugly to me. Um, I don't like having this guy in my pocket shaking around all day as I'm walking around. That's not stellar whatsoever. Um, next issue in terms of low tolerances, or I'm sorry, uh, lax tolerances, loose tolerances, is the fact that there's actually a fair amount of play around the tip of the pen, and that means that as you're pressing down to write with this guy, there's actually a fair amount of back and forth that the tip can do here. So as you write, the very first part of your stroke is actually dedicated to pressing the tip of the pen against the side of the, uh, the the pen hole there in order to get a good purchase, then you start writing. And so that leads to a writing experience, especially on a hard surface that feels a little bit janky to me. Um, it, it really, it doesn't impress me much, especially relative to other pens that are holding the refill a lot more securely. Maybe that just means that this hole is too big. Maybe the spring's not, I don't know. But whatever it is, I don't like it very much. Um, next issue is actually kind of its claim to fame here, this circular bolt pen. Here. Most bolt action pens have a bolt path that looks more like this, where there's a J shape, where you start off by pulling straight down and straight over, and then you release and it locks in place. This is nice because it's not really that much of a fine motor movement sort of affair. It's very intuitive. Just like down plank, there you go, you're good. This guy, however, has this circular path, so you need to start off by applying pressure in this direction, then slowly shift to applying pressure in a downward direction with a slightly different part of your thumb, and then transfer the thumb over to there. That's kind of more complicated, um, to put it nicely. It requires a great deal more fine motor control, especially in this initial transition from, I'm just moving this with no spring tension to, oh wait, now I'm having to change direction of movement while pushing. Um, it's easy to slip off, and as opposed to a very easy down sideways release, this is maneuvering a pack. This is playing a little game of operation or something along those lines. And, you know, I, I honestly don't like it. It's something that 100% I would get better with over time, but it also doesn't offer any compelling advantages that I can see here. This is different than the J-shaped gates, but it's not meaningfully different. It's not helpfully different, and unfortunately, there are big disadvantages, at least in my use, to this. Uh, J-shaped bolt pen I was able to pick up and use day one, no problem. This guy, every time I deploy it, feels a little bit fiddly. Like I said, I'd get used to it, but I don't know why I need to get used to it, given that it doesn't offer me any other advantages to make up for that. And then finally, with all of these issues in mind, with the rattle, with the, 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 the unpleasant action issues, and frankly, the circular lock path, 70 bucks is a lot of money. I mean, this guy's in titanium, you can pay a little less for the stainless, but... Um, for a pen that's got these kinds of issues, especially when a $7 pen doesn't, 
I just don't love it. And so that's the final bit of ugly here, is that you're paying a lot of money for a pen with, a, frankly, a lot of problems. So uh, that's, that's the ugly here. You're paying a lot of money. The circular lock path is uh, weirdly finicky with no benefit to it that I can tell. There's a fair amount of rattle in there. Um, there's a fair amount of gap between the refill and the sides of the pen here. The action is unpleasant. And this is the second one I got. And this one is, according to the maker, perfect. And... I hate to say it, but I beg to differ. So let's go to the final conclusion here. Look, final conclusion, at some level, the maker here has impressed me. He's very nice, he's very responsive, and I, I really appreciate his commitment to quick shipping. He showed that he's a stand-up guy and how he handled the quick start, uh, the Kickstarter, that is, and how he handled the, uh, the, the repair for the first issues there. I appreciate that very much, and I almost feel bad, you know, talking the pen down because of how nice he's been, but at the same time... I, I really don't like this pen. I regret buying this pen very much. Um, the body of it is very nice looking, and I like the versatility to it, but the thing is, this C-shaped bolt offers no payoff for what feels to me to be a lesser action. And it's it's just, it's finicky. And then when you throw in the rattling, when you throw in the, the, the gap issue here, when you throw in all of those things combined, the whole thing feels honestly just a little bit rushed, a little bit underdesigned. Like he got most of the way to giving a damn, but then just kind of stopped. And that's that's really ugly. And so this is a cool pen. There's a lot of interesting stuff that's being done here, but unfortunately it's proof that doing things differently relative to your other bolt action pens in the market isn't necessarily doing things better. And so it's, uh, with that issue, coupled with the other fit and finish issues, it's just simply not well enough done, in my opinion, to command that sort of price. So I don't recommend this guy whatsoever. Um, you should check out maybe Max Madco makes a bolt action pen, Fellholter makes a tie bolt. I think that was one of the original bolt action pens, uh, kind of in the EDC world at least. Then you can also check out my pens playlist for some other ones that I like a lot more. But uh, this guy is going up for sale. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a bath on it, no doubt. But uh, there you go. Sorry. I uh, I really wish I was more in love here. Or frankly, in love at all. That's life. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this review that I made the right call. Get it? Writing. And that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful and mostly non-rattly rest of your day. Bye now.